How's it going, YouTube friends? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brad, the DC Universe Geek. If you didn't know, today we're going to be having a look at the Mezco 112th Collective Lord Dark Side action figure. He comes in a fabulous blue and black cookie tin. I love it when they stick their figures in these cookie tins. I mean, if you're going to go all out and give your figures cloth goods, clothing, and highly articulated bodies, and fabulously sculpted faces, you might as well just go the full nine yards and stick them in these really cool tins. Here's a little look at the back of the tin. It's the exact same as the promo image that we first saw online before the figure was released, where you can see absolutely everything that comes on the end inside of the tin. Extra heads, extra hands, the mother box, the figure itself, the Omega stand. Everything that comes in the tin is on the tin. And just in case anyone's wondering, here's an image of the UPC code just in case you need it. Now let's open up this tin and have a little look inside. Oh, stuff's already falling out. <laughs> you get the Mezco 112th Collective product form with a little write-up. No one really wants to read that in the video. You also get an instruction sheet for how to change up Darkseid's faces, install the batteries into his head, put the mother box on his belt, and install the cape. But we'll go through all that in the video. Once you pull back the foam, you can see the extra heads on this side, three of the extra hands, his mother box, and then a foam cutout <laughs> with Darkseid behind it. Am I the only one that thinks that this is funny? <laughs> this is just... <laughs> This is kind of rad though. They really wanted to make sure that the figure didn't get damaged in shipping. It's, it's encased in foam, soft foam. It looks like he's in the source wall. Someone went, boom, stay there, dark side, you pillock. All right, let's just pull everything out. Under the first layer of foam, you get his cloak that goes over his shoulders. You get the Omega stand, the arm, and the batteries. And that's it. So here he is, all out, everything, all the hands, the heads, the mother box, the figure, and his cloak with the stand all out of the package. What do you think? Honestly? At this point, it is my absolute favorite Mezco 112th Collective, hands down. It's just such a cool looking figure. A lot of the extra details that you're looking at with this figure, I wasn't really sure about in the first place. I was kind of like, do we really want to have all the extra details on the boots and the gloves? And do they really need the different blue tones on his tunic there and the different details on his belt? But really, in the end, I think that it all really just adds to him. and. You know, usually when I look at Mezco doing their signature, let's add a bunch of extra detail to the figures. It doesn't need to be there. I'm kind of like, yeah, I would have rather they didn't do that. But with this one, I just think that everything looks so cool. It all works. It looks apocalyptian. It looks Jack Kirby-ish. I just think that this dark side figure stays really true to a comic accurate version of the character while having that classic Mezco spin on the design choices of this character. Now, let's look at all the accessories up close. For starters, he comes with three extra hands, two of which are left and right that are basically the same, some kind of open claspy hands, and then also one hand that has been designed specifically to grab onto the mother box. Now when it comes to the mother box, there is a very cool feature, and that is that it's magnetic to Darkseid's belt. It'll actually stick to the back. That is really cool. As for the extra heads, well, first pop off the head and you'll notice that you've got to pop the plate open and you can put two little batteries in there. Once you put the batteries in, you can turn it on by flicking the switch on the bottom and then it lights up at the front. Ooh, that's creepy. That's so robotic looking. This is the basic face that Darkseid wears. This is his everyday face. This is his going to a kid's birthday party, going shopping at Costco, generally upset with people or deep in thought face. Next is the cheeky grin and you just pop it in the lip and push it in like that. This is the face that he wears when he's humored or satisfied with himself. Like the, I just came up with the perfect plan to destroy the Kryptonian. <laughs> Next up is everyone's favorite Omega Beam's head sculpt. This is the one that I'm not going to pose him with that much, but it's definitely very, very cool to see that they included this here. Usually, you don't want to see this one up close and personal, because if you do, that means you're about to die. Now let's look at them up close with the lights out. Off. 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 Oh, it's still not dark enough. I really want to see these. Hang on, let's turn off more lights. There. Well, that doesn't really show you anything. If I'm being honest, it does kind of suck that the light doesn't really do that great of a job bouncing off the inside. All right, I'm just going to stop showing these now. Next, we have his angry, fired up, I got punched in the face by Superman a bunch of times, and now I'm all humiliated face sculpt. As for the figure stand, I mean, well, it's, it's a figure stand, right? The same as I always say. It's the basic Mezco 112th Collective figure stand, except for it's got the Omega, which is the final letter in the Greek alphabet. It's also Darkseid's logo, his symbol of sorts, but, you know, it's just a basic blurry figure stand. 
It's secretly a Bigfoot. It's learned from the hide-and-seek master how to evade being photographed clearly. As for Lord Darkseid's cloak, it's kind of neat because it's got the metal shoulders, the metal shoulder pauldrons that go right over the shoulder. And you can hear it when it when it lands on the other metal, that this really is, it's heavy. This whole figure is girthy and heavy. It's not light. This is definitely not a child's plaything. I mean, we know that Mezco 112 collectibles aren't children's plaything, but seriously, don't buy these for your kids. <laughs> You're just giving them a, a really cool work of art that you paid a lot of money for, but... I think it's really cool they made this out of metal. It looks fantastic, definitely has an interesting design to it. Not what I would have chosen if I'm being honest. I like things to be more simplistic. You may want to pose your dark side in this cloak though. This might be something you go for. It definitely makes him look more ruler-like, more regal, more, I mean, business. It looks all right. I probably won't pose him with it though. I like a classic no cloak dark side just like that. One thing that does bother me about this figure in general is getting his belt just right can be a bit of a hassle. As you can see it, it's not straight. So when I push it up to where it wants to go, this side here keeps wanting to fall down. Oh, and now it's not. Look at that. It's done it the entire time I've had this thing out of the package and now it's gonna behave. Good job, thanks dark side. Now, before we get into the articulation, I just wanna take a moment to actually look at his body proportion because I haven't done that yet. This figure's proportions are actually really good. The figure looks fantastic proportion-wise to itself. I think it looks comic accurate and true to the character. Now, as for the articulation, we're gonna find out that he does have a few less articulation points than many of the other Mezco 112th Collective figures. Darkseid's head is on a ball joint, as you've already seen, and so we know exactly what to expect from that. There's actually a lot of motion with the head, but he's also got articulation here in the base of the neck as well. Not a lot, but some. It's gonna offer some more posability and movement. Darkseid's shoulders are actually on the hinge swivels, which we pretty much know they're gonna come on, right? And they go around in a circle, they go up pretty far, so I'm satisfied with Darkseid's shoulders for sure. Fans of the bicep swivel will find out that there isn't any here, so there is no roundabout motion that way. And the elbows are only single jointed, and they don't go 90 degrees. However, as a consolation, they do rotate 360 degrees at the elbow, so there is that. Some of you may be looking here at the glove thinking, is there articulation at the top? Well, there's not. It actually doesn't turn, they're just glued on. However, the wrists are on the ball hinges. I'll just pop it off here so you can see. And there's a lot of motion and range there with the wrists for something that's so big. Okay, well, maybe not a lot, but there's enough. I think there's enough. Darkseid does have a range of motion in his torso that it's actually quite respectable, I think, for a figure of this size. You know, it could be certainly a lot worse. So, yeah, I'm satisfied with that. If we just lift up Darkseid's little skirty thing here, you'll see that his groin is on a gigantic ball joint on each side, which gives his legs a fairly good, his skirt stuck up. Okay, that's embarrassing. His tidy whities are showing. Oh, look at him. He's being all bashful now. Bashful dark side. When dark side's long tunic isn't getting in the way, right? There's actually quite a bit of a range of motion in those legs. Like the posability with his legs is actually really, really good. Now, as far as rotating, he also rotates right there, which is cool. And then I'll let you turn around and let you see the knees there. Those, those knees, <laughs> they're actually pretty good. I'm okay with that. I don't need his, the backs of his feet to be able to kick himself in the back to be satisfied. There is no rotation or is there? Nope. There is no rotation in the knee. Is there in the boot? Yes. There does appear to be a little bit in the boot, but not much. And then his ankles are gonna be that typical Mezco 112th Collective ball jointed ankle. And these aren't terrible, and eh, they could be better. As always, Mezco does not excel with their ankle articulation. It's hit and miss. This definitely could be worse, but it definitely could be better. And you know what? The same thing can be said about his articulation the whole way through. Darkseid's articulation could have been better, but it also could have been a lot worse. That's my opinion. Now for comparison time, I really don't have that many dark sides to compare them to, but I do have the DC Universe Classics Collect and Connect version, the DC Superheroes version of Dark Side. Some people don't like that one for some reason. They think that the character's too small or the head's too small. I like him, he's not ideal, but I think he's a good figure. And then we have the classic Superpowers Collection version. Those are really all the dark sides that I own. 
No, hold on a second there, Brad. Don't get ahead of yourself. There is one more that you forgot while you were recording. That's the DC Collectibles New 52 really gigantically huge dark side. The one that you don't want to move because then you got to move all the rest of the figures out of the way. And your chances of knocking them all over and having action figure dominoes and broken limbs and tears everywhere is just a bad idea. So there it is. It's in the video too. Honestly, though, I do feel like it's the Superpowers Collection Darkseid that gave them the idea to give him a cape, though, because Darkseid is not typically depicted as wearing a cape. Boof. Now, sure, at this point, although I could probably crack out a whole dump truck full of Mezco 112th Collectives to compare Darkseid to, honestly, Superman's size and height seems like the most relevant comparison, and really, we all know that all the male Mezco 112th Collective characters are roughly the same size, so this is going to give you a good average size male body buck scale to Darkseid ratio, and I think that it looks pretty good. I think it looks accurate and true to the comic book. So now we're at the point of the video where, since we've basically looked at everything briefly, the packaging, articulation, sculpting, detail, size comparison, everything, we've looked at it, I suppose I'll just give you my final ideas, opinions, and observations. In a nutshell, I like him. I'm glad I picked him up. Yes, he was on the expensive side, but I kind of feel like he's worth it if you want to get a figure of this scale of quality. I mean, there are the things that other people are going to definitely see as drawbacks, like the lack of articulation points in some areas that a lot of the other Mezco 112th Collective figures have. And some people are really not going to dig all of the different details that Mezco has added to the boots and the gauntlets and the tunic itself. Some people are just going to be like, yeah, no, I'll pass. I like a very classic looking dark side. But honestly, when you have this guy in hand, you're not thinking, well, he doesn't look classic. He really just is a very, very cool looking, well put together, excellently designed figure. The art department did a fantastic job making all of the decisions for the design and flow of his details and paint scheme. Every crack and craggle looks rough like Dark Sides should. Every facial expression, no matter how well of a picture I take of it, you'll never really get the gist of how cool they look until you have this figure in hand. The fact that Mezco even made this figure has me so tickled. Mezco, they don't always get it right. They really honestly don't. And there are figures that I've kind of been like, yeah, that could have been done better. But with this one, honestly, I, I just don't have any complaints about it. I'm 100% I'm satisfied with it, and when I make my list for 2019, a year from now, this one, mark my words, will absolutely be on that list. And if it's not, remind me in the comments how dumb I am for not putting it on there. <laughs> Unless someone comes up with some really good stuff between now and then, this one's definitely going to be on that list. Anyway, those are my thoughts, ideas, observations, and opinions for this figure. You're definitely going to have your own because we all do. We's human. So leave them down in the comment section below. And like I said, I usually get around to going over to Toy News International and loading up my reviews over there as well with the still shots so that if you want to take your time and just browse the photos, you can do that. But it's not just me. There's all kinds of people that load their reviews up over there as well. Daredevil 19, Facemacker Studios, Shardimus Prime. There's really just a ton of people that load their reviews up there. So. It really is a one-stop shop for action figure reviews done by a plethora of really talented reviewers, so go check it out. And finally, if you want to see more of my face and a lot more of my hands, show up in your inbox, you want to become a super friend and join the DC squad, hit the subscribe button if you do remember to ding the bell so you get notified of new videos, and I will see you in the next one. Have an awesome day, super friends, and take care of each other.